you know the Kokoro TTS project on Hugging Face? It's super popular right now. It's this tiny, tiny model that runs on edge devices or even in your browser. And the sound it generates, so clean. Today, we're diving into the paper behind it, styled TTS2, presented at New Rips 2023. The paper brings groundbreaking ideas like style diffusion and adversarial training to TTS, creating speech that's not just natural, but incredibly adaptable. I even gave it a try and fine-tuned the model using one hour of my own voice. Now meet my AI twin. Hi there, who's this joining me? It's me, your synthetic self, or you've done a pretty good job of cloning your voice, but uh, did I get a say in this? Yep, I fine-tuned style TTS2 to replicate my voice. What do you think? Honestly, I'm impressed. It's smooth, uh, clear, and way less robotic than I expected. But uh, hey, or you could dial up the charm a bit. I think I sound a little too serious. Oh, so now you're giving me tips. Anything else? Well, uh, maybe make me better at jokes. You know, uh, lighten up the vibe a bit. If I'm going to be your AI co-host, I need to match your energy. Fair enough. All right, folks. If you're curious about why Style TTS2 is making waves, stick around. We're diving deep into the paper. Let's go. But remember, I'm the star of this show now. Ribbit, ribbit. Let's talk tech. All right, let's dive into Style TTS 2, a new approach to text-to-speech that's all about making synthesized speech sound as human as possible. The big ideas here are style diffusion and adversarial training with large speech models. First, style diffusion treats speaking styles as random variables. Assistments. This means the model can imagine different ways a sentence might sound and pick the best one. No reference audio needed. Second, it uses large pre-trained speech models like Wave LM to handle the tricky timing of speech. This helps the model learn natural rhythms and tones while making training simpler. Together, these methods push the boundaries of what text-to-speech can do, delivering speech that's not just natural, but also expressive. Now you might be wondering, why is this such a big deal? Well, let's take a step back. Over the years, text-to-speech has come a long way in powering virtual assistants and audiobooks. But achieving truly human-like variety and expression still poses challenges, especially for new text styles or when only smaller datasets are available. Style TTS2 addresses these gaps by introducing a generative model that builds on previous approaches but uses style vectors, compact representations of how speech can sound, to create expressive voices more efficiently. Using probabilistic diffusion, style TTS2 remains fast without sacrificing quality. A key innovation is its use of large, pre-trained speech models like Wave LM and Hubert, which guide the system toward better rhythms and timing. This means the model can generate natural-sounding speech without always needing reference audio, opening up new possibilities in TTS. How well does this work in practice? Evaluations show that style TTS2 can generate speech rivaling human recordings. On the LJ Speech dataset, for example, native English listeners rated it higher than earlier models, pushing the scores beyond state of the art benchmarks. On multi speaker datasets like VCTK, style TTS2 nearly reaches human level naturalness while preserving similarity to the original speaker. Another standout point is its efficiency. Trained on a much smaller dataset, it still outperforms large models like Volley with just three seconds of reference speech. This makes it a strong choice for zero-shot speaker adaptation tasks, combining high quality with minimal data requirements. All in all, style diffusion plus adversarial training with large models sets a new performance standard for single and multi-speaker TTS systems. Recent work shows that large, self-supervised models can greatly enhance TTS, by learning rich sound representations from huge datasets. But there's often a multi-step process involved, and it might not be directly optimized for sounding natural. Here, Style TTS2 streamlines things with adversarial training, avoiding extra steps and leading to smoother speech. Other systems, like natural speech, also get near-human results, especially on datasets like LJ Speech, but they rely heavily on resource-intensive methods. 
This paper suggests more standardized evaluation practices going forward. Meanwhile, Style TTS2 stands out by mixing style vectors to produce natural, expressive speech with fewer demands on the pipeline, inching closer to human-level quality without unnecessary complexity. Now let's see how the model is put together. The architecture has three main parts, the speech generation system, the TTS prediction system, and utility modules for training. The speech generation system consists of a text encoder, style encoder, and speech decoder. Then, the prediction system handles duration and pitch. Finally, utility modules such as the text aligner and a discriminator help during training. Training happens in two stages. Stage one focuses on reconstructing spectrograms from input using acoustic modules. Stage two fine-tunes duration and prosody predictors while keeping the acoustic modules fixed. In stage one, the text encoder converts phonemes into representations and the text aligner matches these with the speech. The style encoder captures the style and the pitch extractor computes pitch and energy. The speech decoder then reconstructs the spectrogram by blending these features. A discriminator provides adversarial feedback for more realistic audio. In stage two, the predictors learn how to generate accurate phoneme duration, pitch, and energy using real alignment data. During inference, we rely on the predicted durations to align the speech frames, and the trained vocoder turns the spectrogram into final audio. Style TTS2 moves beyond its predecessor by introducing end-to-end -end training. That means all components are directly integrated, no need for separate vocoders to transform spectrograms into waveforms. Instead, the decoder now produces the final waveform by combining style vectors, phoneme alignments, and pitch details. The paper explores two decoder types, one based on Hi-Fi GAN, which generates waveforms directly, and another that handles magnitude and phase components for improved efficiency. To boost expressiveness, style TTS2 uses snake activation, known to work well for waveform generation. It also features an adaptive normalization layer that tailors the style for each utterance. The discriminators get an upgrade too for better waveform quality across various time resolutions. Take a look at the visuals here. They illustrate two important parts of Style TTS2's training. First, you'll see how the acoustic modules are pre-trained, then merged into the full model. These modules handle text encoding, style extraction, pitch analysis, and phoneme alignment. Pre-training them separately makes the overall process more efficient once everything is put together. Next, you'll notice the SLM adversarial training diagram. This part involves using a pre-trained speech-language model Wave LM to improve synthesis quality. The system predicts durations, prosody, and style, while a discriminator checks whether the result sounds real or synthetic. This strategy allows the model to produce natural, expressive speech without additional Wave LM fine tuning. Here's how the training flow is organized and optimized. First, the acoustic modules, especially the style encoder, go through pre-training to jumpstart the larger training process. These modules learn to reconstruct MEL spectrograms and align text with speech. Pre-training isn't strictly required, but it does speed things up. When everything is trained together, gradients can start to diverge. To manage this, the authors introduce a prosodic style encoder that captures both acoustic and prosodic cues. This encoder makes a combined style representation, which results in higher quality samples. Also, the text encoder uses a BERT-based model trained on large datasets like Wikipedia to enhance naturalness. This balanced approach helps the system train efficiently while still delivering high-quality speech. Now let's talk about style diffusion, a core feature of Style TTS2. The system views speech as a conditional distribution, shaped by the text plus a latent variable representing generalized speech style. This variable captures rhythm, stress, speaking rate, basically the building blocks of how we speak. To produce it, the model uses a diffusion framework called EDM, though the details can get quite mathematical. During training, speech samples are created through a differentiable process that helps every part of the model learn together. The result is a system that can synthesize speech with realistic and varied styles, even under challenging conditions. Two main ideas come into play here, efficient sampling and SLM discriminators. 
For efficient sampling, the system uses a special solver that balances speed with accuracy. It can generate style vectors for high-quality speech in just three steps. In multi-speaker setups, speaker embeddings are added, allowing the model to adapt to specific voices. Next, we have the SLM discriminators, which evaluate how human the speech sounds. A pre-trained Wave LM model is combined with a convolutional network to critique different aspects of audio quality. The discriminator is carefully calibrated so the generator and discriminator can train together in an adversarial loop. This approach leads to more natural and realistic results. Shifting gears, we look at how speech generation and duration modeling are optimized. The generator's loss is designed so that it doesn't rely on the ground truth audio, only the input text. Why is that important? It lets the model handle text that's outside its training distribution, improving its ability to generalize. The training also samples data equally from both seen and unseen groups to keep things balanced. Next up is differentiable duration modeling. We want to accurately predict phoneme durations and then smoothly upsample them without too much complexity. Older methods sometimes used attention mechanisms, which can get expensive and unstable. Here, a simpler Gaussian-based approach is replaced with a non-parametric one, reducing computational load and increasing stability, all while maintaining human-level speech quality. This new approach to phoneme duration modeling tackles a tricky issue. Variations in alignment. Traditional Gaussian-based techniques struggle when alignments differ significantly from training examples. The authors propose a non-parametric method that accounts for these differences. Rather than summing up every duration, which can be messy, the system approximates them with probabilities. It treats each phoneme's duration as a random variable, predicting how likely certain lengths are and aligning them to the total speech frames. This gives more robust training, cutting down on instability and heavy computation. Specific loss functions fine-tune these predictions, so the final speech is smooth, clear, and natural. Next, let's check out the experimental setup. The model was trained on three datasets, LJ Speech, VCTK, and Libri TTS, each with its own quirks. LJ Speech has around 13,000 clips from a single speaker, neatly split for training, validation, and testing. VCTK features 44,000 clips from 109 speakers, covering a range of accents. Libri TTS focuses on multi-speaker adaptation, with data from over 1,100 speakers. A specific slice of Libri TTS was used for zero-shot speaker adaptation to test how the model behaves with minimal reference audio. All these datasets were converted into phonemes and resampled to keep everything consistent. This setup allowed the team to see how the model performs across both single and multi-speaker tasks. When it came time to evaluate the model, the authors looked at two main metrics, naturalness and similarity. Naturalness measures how close the speech is to what a human would produce. And similarity checks how well it matches a reference recording. They recruited native English speakers via Amazon Mechanical Turk and followed ethical guidelines. Each test used 80 random text samples converted into speech by the proposed model, by some baselines, and by the ground truth. There was special focus on out-of-distribution data, such as audiobook text not used during training. Baseline models included VITS, Style TTS, and JETS all known for strong performance. This comprehensive comparison ensured that Style TTS2 was really put through its paces. Now let's see how Style TTS2 stacks up against those baselines. Take a look at the scores in Table 2. Human judges rated speech on a scale of 1 to 5 for both naturalness and similarity, and a comparative mean opinion score was also calculated. On the LJ speech dataset, Style TTS2 notably outperformed natural speech and naturalness. On VCTK, it beat VITS in both categories. In zero-shot testing on Libri TTS, Style TTS2 did better than Volley for naturalness, but got slightly lower similarity scores. Don't forget, all audio was resampled uniformly, and ablation studies were performed to see how the model did on both in-distribution and out-of-distribution scenarios. Style TTS2 really stands out in naturalness for LJ speech, Listeners sometimes even preferred it over the ground truth, possibly because the dataset has its own inconsistencies. On VCTK, style TTS2 matches ground truth level quality, 
showing that it uses reference audio effectively. In mean opinion score or MOS tests, it remains robust to out-of-distribution texts, outperforming other models without any drop in quality. For zero-shot tasks with Libri TTS, it beats volley and naturalness, while requiring much less training data, which is highly efficient. Again, if you check Table 2, you'll see Style TTS 2 leading in both in-distribution and out-of-distribution performance. Let's look at Figure 2 here. It shows how style diffusion clusters speech styles using T-distributed stochastic neighbor embedding. In the LJ speech model, you'll notice clear separations for emotions like happiness, sadness, and anger, indicating effective classification of emotional cues. In the Libri TTS model, new speakers also form distinct clusters, confirming that it generalizes well. Interestingly, if you zoom in on a single speaker, some emotional clusters overlap slightly suggesting there's still some refining to do. The table next to figure two compares naturalness and similarity in zero-shot settings. Style TTS2 excels at naturalness, though its similarity scores trail a bit. This indicates that further fine-tuning for speaker adaptation could be beneficial down the road. Continuing with expressiveness, Figure 2 demonstrates how style TTS2 can generate diverse emotional speech. We see those separate clusters for happiness and anger in LJ speech, and robust generalization for unseen speakers in Libri TTS. Small overlaps mean zero-shot adaptation still has challenges. In Table 4, you'll find speech diversity metrics comparing pitch and duration variations across different models. Style TTS2 boasts the highest variation, which suggests it produces more lifelike and varied speech. This to past. Despite using diffusion-based methods, it surpasses ProDiff and FastDiff in both speed and quality. Finally, check out Table 5, where you'll see how each component of the system influences performance. It shows that style diffusion and adversarial training are essential for achieving these results. Wrapping up, we come to the ablation studies and overall conclusions. In Table 5, you can see what happens when individual components, like style diffusion or adversarial training, are removed. Performance drops, confirming their importance in producing human-like speech. Overall, Style TTS2 outperforms previous models on datasets such as LJ Speech, demonstrating expressive and diverse results even with limited data. But certain areas, like zero-shot speaker adaptation, have room for improvement. The paper also raises ethical concerns around potentially misusing zero-shot voice imitation for harmful or deceptive purposes. It stresses the importance of responsible deployment to avoid negative outcomes. And that's the big picture of Style TTS2, an end-to-end, diffusion-based model with adversarial training that moves us closer to truly natural text-to-speech synthesis. And that's the big picture of Style TTS2, an end-to-end, diffusion-based model with adversarial training that moves us closer to truly natural text-to-speech synthesis. So the next time you hear a virtual assistant or an audiobook, you might just wonder, was that a human or was it style TTS2? Either way, the future of speech synthesis is sounding pretty exciting.